alone. So we're going to kick off the episode. This is not a brand promotion, but I bought this new perfume, right? It's called uh, Bad Boy oh, by yeah. Carolina Herrera, right? <laughs> oh, my God. It. It's got some... Oof. Bro, this thing has amber ouds, all kinds of oh, smell, wow, and okay. it's infused with cannabis. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> that's a nice way to go into a restaurant <laughs> so guys we got james the mental health personal trainer he's here today to walk us through his journey uh we have a different spin on it today it's understanding mental health which is a huge thing i've mentioned time and time again how much i went through um the beginning of this year it was about june or july i'm i've mentioned it a number of times i got separated from my wife I posted on social media. People thought I was crazy. They said, he's lost it. He's on drugs again. I knew exactly what I was doing, right? But mental health almost cracked me. I did break down three months into it. I heard my, my, what my wife said about me. Um, she said I was uh, opiate dependent. This is something that happened 15 years ago. Um, other things that I couldn't control, uh, that I'm aggressive and... Um, I was helpless. I broke down. I drove to the, no, sorry. I drove to the doctor. I called the doctor said, yo, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown right now. I drove to the doctors as fast as I could. I got out. I asked them, look, I need to see somebody that like, we can't help you. And I broke down right there. I said, my wife is doing some madness to me right now. I can't do nothing. And you guys won't fucking help me. So they called the mental health unit. Okay. Down the road to the doctors. And I went there. And I said, I'm going through this and I need some help. He goes, we can't help you. I'm going to stay there. <laughs> so, I paid all this money for this system and you can't fucking help me. So, James, tell us who you are, um, what you do and why you do it. And then we'll... Yeah, so obviously, yeah, obviously uh, like, like we said, I'll class myself as James, a mental health PT. Essentially, I am an online uh, online personal trainer and life coach. Um, the, soul, the soul being is around men's mental health. Um, and obviously that all stemmed from, I'm 35 now, but from the age of 17 to 27, I had an eat disorder. So it was, uh, started out as anorexia. So like the restriction of food, excessive exercise. And then within about 18 months, it changed to bulimia. So obviously I was binging on food, making myself sick. Um, but my worst at 21, I was five and a half stone. So bearing in mind, I'm, I'm sitting down now, but I'm six foot four. So obviously I'm, I'm tall and I was, I was very, very much underweight my parents had to sign a, like a do not resuscitate form while I was in hospital. So I was literally on the circle in the drain, so to speak. Um, yeah. Quick one, James, how much is stone, five stones in kilograms uh, and pounds for like wider audiences? Five and a half. Uh... Cause right now I'm 95 kgs. That's topping two hundred pounds, and I'm five eight, so I'm considered yeah, obese right, right now. Right, so five, five and a half stone <laughs> is thirty five kilos. Uh, pounds. And how is, much is that in pounds? Uh, would be seventy seven. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So like my, I, I, I see my uh, at the time oh. we're talking what 16, 17 years ago. So BMI. The BMI chart was 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 all the rage back then, and I think I was like almost off the scale. I wasn't even there in terms of like the under uh, under underweight. Um, so I think I think there was um, there was usually about a three or four year wait to be under the mental health like an eat disorder unit. Um, but obviously, I got referred straight away due to the fact that had I not have changed or had I not made any progress, I, there's no way I'd I'd be here today. I think I would have just ended up um, with my organs shutting down um obviously i think the, what people that are under underweight for a, a long period of time their biggest uh the biggest killer is just organ failure uh, there's obviously too too much stress on the body and the body just gives out and i know that was my that was my dad's biggest fear obviously for the um waking up every every morning he used to wake up and first thing mm -hmm. he did was check on me and that was his that was his life for like 10 years um but yeah obviously luckily i went through um i went through an eating disorder unit for like six months and then uh, various forms of uh, alternative therapy it wasn't like your counseling sitting in a chair i saw hypnotists i saw like a sports psychologist um obviously i have a, a, a sporting background so the sports psychologist was someone that i really like 
opened up to and i think as part of therapy i think the only way you actually get to the root cause of your problems if you've got that relationship with someone that you can open up fully with them um and yeah luckily managed to get out the Mm. other side it was still took i was 20 24 when i realized that i was i was fucked and i you know when you admit in yourself that i've got a problem and but i had no idea how to fix it it's so much i'd already had it for seven eight years um and it was like i can't do this on my own i don't know how i'm going to do this um and it still took me four years to to recover um but managed to get thank god managed to get out the other side of it got back into work that was a big thing for me in terms of like small little um small little catalysts to my recovery getting back into work having that purpose managed to get me Mm -hmm. out the other side and then the gym the gym came at a random point in my life where I, I'd met a girl, the first girl that I had ever had a relationship with. Um, I was with her for like 18 months and was living with her. And she she broke up with me via WhatsApp. Um, what, like 20, 20, what age was this? 29. What age? Um, so I was mentally, I was okay, cool. I had recovered from my eating disorder tendencies. I was still very much underweight. Um, but yeah, she, she broke up. She ended the relationship via WhatsApp with no real reason. Um, and I, I came up with my own reasons, like you do. I've, if I if I don't have the answers, I'll make the answers up in my head. So, psych, yeah, psycho psychoanalyze oh, myself hard. and thought oh, it's because I don't look like a man. I don't I don't have that that macho protector role. That obviously, like most men, kind of want. Um, so I decided oh, if I get a little bit bigger and mm. I put on a little bit of weight or muscle, then she'll want me back, and we can all play happy families. Well, they say about there is a thing called the gym bug. And I, I, I definitely caught that because I, within about a couple of months of going to the gym, I had pretty much forgotten all about her in the nicest possible way. Um, um, but yeah, within, within 18 months, yeah. I'd put on five and a half stone. Um, literally almost like at my worst, I'd almost doubled in size. Um, I tracked my journey on Instagram. Uh, so now you're just quickly. So now you're probably hundred of, yeah. so if I'm right, you're 140 pounds, yeah. about hundred kgs. 29 yeah. out of the eating yeah. disorder you got into the gym broke up with a chick uh, uh, yeah and you're I fucking think for, flying right now i think i think like like you said i think if you're if you feel shit in yourself and then you get validation off other people it gives you that that bit of like oh fucking hell, i needed that and that's what i that's what i got i i I, yeah. I became the kind of people that i hate today on social media the guys that is like it was but, <laughs> but you know what the thing is i i think every guy has to go through that ego stage I th- I think I think that is a fundamental part of finding who you are. Like if you if you can't get if you if you still have issues within yourself and you're self critical of yourself, if you can seek validation from others, is it healthy in the long run? No. Is it yeah. necessary for a certain period of your life? A hundred percent. Um so I was the I was the the guy on Instagram that was I trained with my top off and and whatnot solely for for likes and stuff. And then obviously then I reached a point where almost like the the business brain came in like i had loads of people wanting me to train them because of the the transformation that i'd made and it was like here we go so oh, you train me yeah, too, so mate. It, 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 it got to this <laughs> point where i was like i had, had people oh, train me mate train me mate it's like hang on a minute i love i love the gym it's become part of me now if i can turn this into a into a job like i'm gonna it's like if, if, if you if you do a job that you love you never have to work a day in your life and that that, that is very true um and it, yeah, so it just it became the natural thing. So I, I got qualified as a PT in 2019, the February 2019, and then I literally spent the rest of 2019 um, on the gym floor training people, getting experience. Um, so I've been doing it for nearly a year, and then uh, the the resilient part of my life really kicked in because I um, I broke my leg end of 2019 playing football. Um, I was out of action for like six weeks, recovered, first game back, I broke my other leg in four places. Um, and I was in hospital, I was sent home just before lockdown. Um, so February 20, uh, 20, 2020, um, yeah, broke my leg in, broke my right leg in four places, um, was in a cast literally from like toe to, to bollocks, I couldn't move my leg at all, it was like fixed, like straight out. Um, was in a cast until September, told I was clinically healed. And then it broke again, literally just rebroke. Um, so I had to deal with yeah three three leg breaks in eight months. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, so that was um, Ooh, wow. that was difficult. That was very difficult. Um, and obviously, but all, all this time we're in, we're still in the midst of the pandemic and lockdown and whatnot. Um, so I, I came out. I finally came out the cast in, I think it was like March 2021. And then I did I did nothing on my I did no physical activity mm. of any sorts until until May. Um, and that's when lockdown lifted and everyone was back to work and. I hadn't worked for 18 months um, and it was like I realized in that time that I if I wanted to be successful and earn money that I couldn't be a in-house PT on the gym floor it's not sustainable there's not enough hours in the day so it's like I had to think of something else to do and it was like do I still do the PT stuff do I try and get a job work in an office and work my way up the career ladder and then it was another one of these like epiphany moments like my my close mates knew about my my eating disorder and my mental health struggles and the amount of people that messaged me was like mate lockdown's been so fucking tough like I, I had I had friends that were contemplating suicide and um and all, and all sorts and it was just like mm-hmm. hang on a minute we're coming out of a lockdown I've got all my mates telling me that they're struggling mentally they don't know where they fit in life anymore and They've been told that they can't go out and integrate with other people. And then they've been told they can go back into work, work in an office with people that they don't want to fucking do. And um, and that's when it was like, okay, I can become, I can use my 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 own experience and my own like trauma for good. And obviously that's whereby I came up with the idea of becoming James yeah. Mental Health PT and and going online with the with the sole focus of the like focusing on mainly men, because obviously I'm a man, I can resonate with with men's feelings and I can I can relate to women's issues in regards to like the eating disorders and relationship with food, but I don't understand the dynamic of a woman. Otherwise, I'd be mm. fucking rich. Um, yeah, so yeah, same, yeah. I wrote that <laughs> yeah, so... so far. What's, what would be your magic yeah. superpower? I yeah. don't understand what the fuck women think. So yeah, like, like you said, it's through <laughs> through adversity that that, that that business ideas are born, and obviously that's how it that's how it was born. So I've spent the last eighteen months um, growing growing um my business um I, I now have my own app which i launched like a few months ago um which encompasses everything that i do within i call it the resilience program is my is my online training program um yeah and obviously i never thought i'd be able to have an app and it's like it's quite it's quite one of them like proud moments the day it was released it was just like but yeah i'm on the, uh, go on go on the play store and download my app it's like, well, i look i look like a i look like a real big baller so uh yeah but um yeah, it's just yeah. That, that's kind of like my my story in a in a in a nutshell. I went through went through a whole load of shit for ten years, and luckily, based on the stats, I was very lucky to get out the other side of it. Um, that was mainly down to the support of my parents, who were like my they are my rocks. Um, and yeah, obviously, support networks massive, yeah. and yeah. they yeah managed to get out the other side. And really, despite the the, the setbacks and stuff along the way, it's like I've not really looked back. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I've how it's led me to how I'm where I'm now. I think that's an awesome story, mate. Very, very, very interesting. That a lot of the adversity is somewhat similar to the things that I went through. So eighteen, um, I had just finished high school, going in college in the US. So I lived in the US from the from nineteen ninety nine uh, all the way through two thousand and fourteen. Two thousand fourteen, I was deported to right. the UK after my three year prison sentence. They seem- they said you had to get out. Um, at 18, I had just discovered that I was able to push a bit of weight, right? I was always the small, skinny, scrawny Indian kid with big buck teeth until I got braces and my teeth were straight at 17. And then I went to the gym and I was stronger than people who were taller than me or bigger than me already. And I was like, holy shit, this is kind of cool. And I kept pushing that. And then I found uh, I didn't have an eating disorder, but I right. had a drug disorder, right? I had a drug addiction problem and it started with a knee break and the knee break was an ACL, a trauma ACL. They gave me Percocets. Percocets led to uh, a want for more. That led to more pills, more drugs that led into heroin, a heroin right. addiction, full-fledged intravenous heroin addiction. And that was introduced by a chick, me wanting to um, impress a chick. 
So at 18 at first, it was getting to selling weed. Uh, I was big. I was the I was the man. Yeah, Shane's got this, and I, I just wanted popularity, whether it was weed or if it was um, money mm-hmm. and being the next big thing on Wall Street. Either or would have been great for me. Yeah. It was the attention I seek. I was seeking. Now through that stage, I went and explored more. At 21, I met this chick, and uh, basically, she bartered okay pills for sex. Yeah, yeah. One of those situations, and I was just like, okay, I like this. Uh, let's do this every day. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> it's got very expensive. And after that, it, not only did it get expensive, but it got into a relationship where she got my sister right. on drugs. Wow. On heroin. Uh, to the point where my sister was having to steal from our parents to get money. Uh, I landed myself in jail because she was stealing from me, and I didn't even know it. She was stealing the drugs that I was selling while I was sleeping. Wow, she okay. was taking them and eating them. Okay. And I was waking up every day and like, oh my God, am I getting this high that I don't understand why there's a hundred <laughs> yesterday and there's 35 today. Like what the hell is going on? Little did I know she was taking those pills and getting heroin. And then that's how it led to, uh, I went to jail, I came out, nobody wanted to be, yeah. uh, nobody wanted to know me anymore. You were the kid who fucked up. So now the only, what do you do? You go to the thing you can mesh with that does click with you. And she introduced heroin to me that led into other stages. And then I landed, long story short, over three years of a severe drug addiction that landed me in three rehabs, like I said, six, seven jails. And then at 24, a three year prison sentence in a correctional facility in the Ameri- wow. in, in the United States kids that are killers and like I'm gen- I'm not bo- like people can search garden state youth correctional facility it's no fucking joke okay and I had to get through that at 24 and come out on the other side again adversity I'm not saying this to, sh- to, yeah. to blow myself up it's to show adversity and resilience and every time I went through it I went to I went when I was in prison 15 months in, my girlfriend was have it was fucking another dude and then posting it on Insta- Instagram, yep. which I had, had no idea about. My sister tells me this. I'm in prison. I can't do anything about it. She was supposed to visit me. I ask her. She says, you're the reason all this stuff is happening. Don't ever call me again. Hangs up the phone with me. I try to call her back. You've been blocked. 15 wow. months. I had no idea why I was broken up with, why she broke up with me. All I had was my emotions, um, myself a six by nine cell and my bunkie saying, yo, bro, she's probably oh, getting some tenage dick right now. And just imagine Mahi, just imagine Mahi. And he's like, he's digging, digging in, digging in. But this is the, this is, you're in what? You're in a fucking- Yeah, he's not gonna, not gonna care about your like, feelings, are they? Yeah, don't, really, give a, yeah, don't give a shit. That's your he's, Yeah. He's really, he's, that's his way of toughening you up and that, as bad as it was and traumatizing as it was that I had to get through mm. it because otherwise you're just a punk, right? I got through it. I wrote letters, no response. Okay. All kinds of things. And then I got ready. And then I started saying, all right, I'm going to get ready for this. I'm going to get ready to come out. People are going to hate me. They're going to judge me. I'm going to be a fucking mutant. And I got on that pull up bar in six months. I was doing muscle ups, 20 muscle ups on the, on the pull up bar. People are like, yo, you're the biggest Indian I know. <laughs> and I'm just walking around the yard like, poof, poof. Because I'm not a tough yeah, guy, yeah. Yep. but you want to appear to be tough in there. You want to appear to have, you know what I mean? I got out and I was like, this is my rebirth. And the past 10 years, I have fucking annihilated yeah. every single person's doubts. Right? I've annihilated their beliefs that he's going to fail. He's going to fuck up again. And that's my motivation to get me to where I am today. And today I can prove on paper, on a bank account, I've done over a million pounds, a million thousand, a million and 84,000 pounds wow. in revenue in less than three years. As an ex addict, ex convict, uh, junior sales guy, never been an account executive, business development manager. And I said, in the pandemic, mm. when people are crumbling, one of my best mates in rehab in Oklahoma, he committed suicide. He was a big dude in the gym. Texas, big Dave, Dave Shahzini. And he mm. was a fucking a goon, bro. And 
he committed suicide yeah. during the pandemic because he had no gym to go to. And me, I decided to build a business. And today I'm running, I know for a fact, there's not one podcast in my domain at my nine months experience doing what I do. 100%. And that gives me Billy Big yep. Bollocks to walk around and say that, right? And the same goes for you. So if somebody's looking at being a mental, if they're solid, uh, they have a strong mm -hmm. mental health background, they want to elevate it. What kind of range of income are they looking at after 18 uh, Well, it's not, I'm, I'm not where I want to be obviously uh like my goal my goal this year is to get to consistently get to 5k a month um that's my that's my goal um yeah obviously with all the i never i, I think i was not i was not when i did the when i did the face-to-face mm -hmm. -face, like pt stuff there aren't any systems i never did any systems that had no uh like consultation forms and it was just chatting the chat but i just had like a like a conveyor belt of people in the gym they saw me they saw my story like train me fine I, I didn't have to do any advertising it wasn't until like post post lockdown when it was like i decided to launch this uh, it was just like shit where do i start like i'm i have a i have a, a background in in business development but they've all been for in like double glazing and mm -hmm. and uh, like nothing nothing in within the fitness industry <laughs> um so what i did was i've been working with a like a business mentor for the last seven months um and it's obviously like him and his team okay. have basically okay. shaped me to become like the, the the in terms of like from a business point of view the person I am now obviously my my backstory is me the content I produce is me um, but obviously they they've helped put all the systems in place they've put me in touch with the with the app developers to to have my own app um, so I think in terms of like after it's around what after all the all the my running costs which are fucking scary i added them up the other day it's like oh god like you don't even want to know but you have to know it's like one of them like you write it all down and you're just like e god oh yeah there's that there's that it's just like right you tote it up and you just you put you put the, you put, the, you, put the, you put it down and walk away um yeah so like I'd, i i i want to uh what's it been it but after everything it's probably like two and a half at the minute um yeah so it's not it's not it's not it's not it's not where i want to be but i know that the industry that i'm in is so obviously the fitness industry is inc incredibly like saturated um everyone's a everyone's a pt um everyone's an online coach and i know that yeah. the fact that i have something that's incredibly niche and at the minute is incredibly powerful that no one can touch no one can touch your own story no one can take away your your experiences and it's just about no. picking pieces yeah. like you got the likes of um like Jordan Peterson, um, Andrew Tate. Um, I know he's incredibly, inc he, he divides opinion. I'm a I, fan. I think, I think the way, the way I've summed it up to people that hate him, I think that his, his message is so important. His delivery. Yeah. His, de his delivery is, is his pit. delivery is questionable at times. Yeah. I, I think, but, but again, he yeah, doesn't yeah, give yeah. a toss about that because he knows his market. He's he's nailed his market down to a T. Like marketing wise, he's a genius. Yeah. Um. And obviously, like women are offended by oh, him, yeah. but he doesn't give a toss because like, he doesn't want to work with women. He's not interested in in working with women or resonating with women. Um. But there are so many elements to what he says that's so needed for men. But I think the way the what the I think some it's all person dependent. There are some guys that can get their shit together like that. There are other guys that almost need that stabilizer analogy with a bike and obviously that's 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 me that's obviously me that i've got guys yeah. that obviously my within within my resilience program i i might i focus on four four key pillars obviously the, the first one is, is your mental health and mindset then it's your training and nutrition and then it's the work-life balance um so obviously that's how i tackle my my coaching methods are, are, are on are on them four key pillars so it's it's guys that probably know that they're struggling and a bit like how I was when I was on on the on the acceptance level where I knew that I was screwed with my eating disorder, but there was no one in the mental health space then that I could turn to. I basically had to rely on my dad and myself and my mum to to get to get myself out of it. I want to maybe not to the point where I want to I want to help guys that have that are that have, they have goals. They're so disillusioned with life at the minute, and they just need that that discipline, that routine, that structure. Um, to, to implement into their yeah. life, and it's almost it's like true. the the easiest way that I describe it is in if you want to if you want to build yourself up career wise, 
depending on how you're working, if you're working within a corporate company, you're not in control. You are not in control of that. You can, you could, you could be, you could be at a level yeah. whereby you're, you could piss the manager's job easy, but you'd not be given that opportunity because that manager has been there for years. And he doesn't want to leave. So it's like, you're doing all these things and you're not getting the recognition you deserve. You step foot into the gym or from an exercise or a physical point of view, it's such a leveler whereby the results you put in, you will get out. And I think that it once guys know that from a physical point of view, you put the effort in the gym or in a, in a, in running or whatever, you will get the results. There is no, Oh, you have to rely on other people. It's solely down to you. And I think once guys can get their head around the fact that they put effort in, they get effort out that then can transition into, into like personal development within their own lives from a, from a relationship point of view, from a work point of view, but initially like getting your, getting your head right from a, from a physical point of view, I think is the, to me, that's the, that's the key building block to, to sorting out your head and realizing that you are, you are so much more than what you actually think you are. Um, it's like that limiting, that limiting belief. Yeah, no, my, there was a coach I work with. Um, he was the one who first showed me about limiting, limiting beliefs. And it was, uh, I said, I want to do a million quid this year. And he goes, why not 10 million? And I said, all right, well, I want to do 10. He goes, well, why didn't you say a hundred? And I was like, all right, why not a billion? And he goes, well, let's stick out a hundred for a second. And let me show you what a hundred million dollar business looks like. This, this, this. You got fifteen hundred employees. Are you ready for that? Mm. I was like, no. He's like, what do you want? <clears throat> I was like, I'm on my house. I want my security. I want my Ferrari. Uh, he goes, all right. So you need about twenty five, thirty k a month. It's like, no, yeah, all right. So because you, mm. you don't even need half a million quid. That's what you need, right? So why do you need a hundred million dollar business? Okay. And when I was looking at the limiting belief of that, I started to reevaluate how I approach a lot of things in life, right? And I've, uh, in terms of limiting beliefs, I don't believe I have um, any right now. And then my next like outrageous adventurous goal is I'm going to become a billionaire. I'm going to just like, if I, if I've done a million and it, I've got nothing to show for it because I spent at one point, I had an 18,000 pound payroll. 18,000 pounds. We made wow. that month, we made 63,000 pounds. It was fucking beautiful. I went to Morocco with my wife and daughter. <laughs> you just see your face. Just, yeah, <laughs> proud. That's so what it is. Proud. You, should, you fucking should be. <laughs> oh, it was, it's, it's been great. It's been great, bro. I'll tell you, it's been so fulfilling. And I, what I'm relating to is the point where you said, when you get that, um, that mm. little oomph when you get in shape. The first convincer, this is what Andy Shaw taught me. You have set a 12-week goal. You have one outcome. What one thing are you going to do? Specific key outcomes in a stated goal. And one of them was um, the convincer. And what is it that you what is it that happens for you to be convinced you've hit your goal? I had done that transformation plan that I told you, mm -hmm. right? I failed three times after. I don't I don't maybe we can go into that. I went from 95 key kgs, which I am right now. I'm at my heaviest I've ever been right now. That back then I was yeah. quite heavy. And I went to 76 kgs and fucking ripped. And one night it was out at a work do. And I went to a, I went to the bar and I was standing there and I was, you know, you, you've got the look. So your shoulders yeah. are broad and your yeah. chest is square. Like you got that square chisel chest, right? And I was at the bar and I saw these two hot chicks and I was like, Hey, how are you guys tonight? And they go, we don't want to talk to you. You look like one of those bad boys. Like yes. Girls. And I was like, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I had never been that guy ever. That's, that, that, that's funny. That that's funny I've because like, I, I, I can relate to that so much. Cause obviously what I, what, what I, what, what, what I used to do on Instagram, <laughs> like you said, with the whole working out with me top off and stuff, even, even like my, my, my wife yeah. now, like her, her first opinion when she saw my profile was uh, fuck boy PT. Literally, I, I, I fitted the, yeah. the, the image of what, of what a PT is that absolutely loves themselves. It and it's like, I did love myself, but probably from a completely different side for what most, most PT guys do. They're like ego, ego maniacs that got like, stay in shape just to, well, like you said, just to, to put it about and, you, and use whatever. With me, it was about yeah. the, the recovery journey. 
like you said, becoming becoming the like two two point oh, and that that's what yeah. that's what I was doing because for yeah. ten years I I, re- I received no validation from anyone. I didn't love myself. I didn't want to look at myself. I didn't, didn't want anyone to see me. And it's like when you do a complete one eighty on that, and like you said, situations in the gym where someone will come up to be like, "Fucking hell, mate, you're oh, you're, you're a strong guy," and it's like, "Mate, thank you." Like, I, don't know, I bet you get it all the time. It's like no thank you like honestly that it's just it's just that like you say, it's just that, that validation <laughs> that the validation of people that like you don't always see it in yourself because you see yourself every day and it's like when you when someone comes up and like you said it's like what well, yeah. little things like that which I, I do it to i do it to other guys in the gym if a guy in there's got like like huge calves i'm just yeah, like fuck me mate what i do to swap them and it's just like little it's like paying it forward like someone someone does it and you, you know what it's like it's like you, you give it to That's someone cool. else when they clearly deserve it and obviously yep. guys work in different ways and i know my, my missus when we said in the gym i was like babe look at look at his calves she's like calves like why do you even care i was like calf it's calves <laughs> it's not even about <laughs> fucking chest and arms for guys it's, it's calf you have calf envy like that's it i was like i got i got long legs they done my my legs my quads and calves do not grow in proportion to what that guy's does so i'm fucking jealous so yeah so i'll go and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those so it's just uh, legs, right? yeah. Just, obviously, it's just it's just uh, it's just that 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 validation that that people need. And obviously, to me, it all it all stems from, like you said, if you want if you want more out of life and if you want more out of your career, you need to have some aura about you that you you're you're you you, you can back your shit oh, up. And it's like you you're imposing, you're confident. And to me, the only way that comes from is by building discipline within yourself. Like ultimately, most guys, what's the purpose of most guys going to gym? They want to look good naked. That's pre- that. That is exactly what it is. And it's like if you can stand in front of a mirror, take your clothes off, and go, yeah, yeah, like yeah. And it's like there's yeah, there's always areas hungry. you can improve on. But if you can if you can look at yourself and go, you know what, well done me. Like I can I can look at myself, no no airs and graces, like no filter, and just go, well done. Like to me that transitions it levels you up to to a completely different level it sets you apart from everybody else because that like you said you go you you go into a meeting you go into a networking group and you are that guy that people go what's he about like he's he's big i want i want i want to know what his story is i want to know what he does and it is it's like you you go into a room and and it's just human nature the it's human nature you 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 immediately go you scan the room and you whether it's a guy or a girl you will pick the biggest guy in the room and be like takes your eye straight away and it's like and if you if you have that ticked off in your in your in your in your box in your own journey of like self-development it's going to put you in the best in the best frame of mind and the best shape or the best image for other people as well and obviously hey it's your, you've hit the nail on the head i'll tell you exactly even from from that point of me uh being in the shape that i, I like i would take so many pictures of just myself and be like holy shit i can't believe i've got I've, I I never realized that how much important diet and just weight loss mm. uh, shows your abs. Like you yeah. don't have to do an ab workout. You just eat yeah, properly yeah. and you don't have to do an ab workout. I was like, holy fucking shit. This is crazy. And I would, I would like, this is like for men who will watch this. This is what it feels like. I was on holiday and I was caught, like I would go to a club. And right. my nickname was Machine. I could, yeah. Can't imagine why. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking energized, buddy, mate. And I, I swear to God, I met my wife, and um, I then like I ra- I started to run my business, and you could walk us through this because this this part is important because we build up this thing of yes, there's this heightened grace that happens when mm-hmm. you become uh, yeah. the man you want to be, really. You're the man you want to be when you look, you can wear a shirt and put on something and look, mm. holy shit, I fucking love this. And I got married and I said, I'm going to build a business and be independent. And all my time went into building the business. Yep. Right. I tried three training programs that I failed because the eating, I just couldn't do the heck sausages anymore. I couldn't do the, the salads. Mm with barely anything in it. I couldn't do, I fucking hate chicken breast, man. It's so boring to eat, but, and then you watch Tyson saying discipline is, is, is something. It's not because you want yeah, to yeah. do it. It's to, Ronnie Coleman says it like, it's to get yeah. big, bro. Like that's what, that's what the fuck is about. And I got fat, right? And when I go to events and yesterday I went to a business meeting 
and I bought this wicked T-shirt. It's it's got yeah. LA on it, and it's my type of style. Okay, the neck is loose, <laughs> and my fucking tits are showing. <laughs> my stomach is showing, and I had to put on a sweatshirt because mm-hmm. I'm like I don't look the way I want to. And I built. A, yeah, I told yeah. you, I built this really GPT that. Again, if I show, so I'll give you a quick, like, I'll give you a quick glance, right? Just so everybody can see like the potential, and then you can show us to what your uh, app is able to do. But I got this, and I started to say, "All right, I want to change the way I look." Here are the expected gains. Uh, here's what I look like right now, and the and the goal. So here's my weight. Here's my body fat. Here's my waist. 98 bicep, shoulders, thighs, and calves. And what I said is give me a month by month progression stage of how it will look. So tell me if these are healthy drops. It's it, it's, it's, it's quite it's quite rapid. I, I would I would I would expect something less than that, but it depends again, it all depends on what, what the goal is for. If you're doing it for a for a holiday or for like uh so it's to it's to lose weight. So the, I said I want to mm-hmm. lose weight by month six and then pack on muscle from uh, month seven to eleven. So I want to be 81 kgs like okay. ripped yeah, yeah but bulky right so i said show me a picture of how it will look it shows this i said all right show me a bit more detail i want to <laughs> look like a spartan so it shows this it shows your body right then it says this is how it can it can come together this is more and then i said all right give me the whole year and i want to get to 10 percent body fat so again like gpt's now are showing yeah. and it goes into metabolic rate uh, what my kind of sample diets are, uh, and then I said, how how is it? How am I going to look? Right. So imagine you could. That's that's my. Uh, it was supposed <laughs> to be Bella, but they wrote Billa, and yeah, yeah. That, that's the ultimate goal, right? That is like the ultimate goal for me, and but I can't I can't follow it. Okay. Like I still can't follow it. I don't know where my discipline is lacking so much. So at this A, or what do you advise men to do who are either in shape or want to get in shape? They also want to run a business because these are yeah. two ultimate goals that will match up and make yeah. it just insanely incredible. What do you what do you recommend they do uh, on this journey to staying healthy, mm-hmm. also being good at their business and dedicating yep. the amount of pressures, times, client management, <clears throat> marry them up and, and I stay think successful the thing is, along the way. The way that uh, the way that I always look at things, and obviously people want that's a, that's a, that's the one the, the two things people want. But the thing is, in life, all guys we have we have three things that we want to focus on: career, body, relationships. But we we can only ever do two. Yep. You can never do all three. You can only ever do okay. two at, at the same time. So it's like guys that want to get absolutely fucking jacked in the gym and build their business. If they have a if they have a partner they ain't gonna be fucking happy and that and obviously that's the the analogy that i use it's like you can't you can't juggle you cannot juggle all three you can only focus on two at the same time so it's more about taking a complete stock of where you are in your life at the minute and and really focus on what two is your priority for now because obviously ultimately if you are if you're at a point where you 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 are new to the business new, new in your business you know that you need to focus on that to get that off the ground to lay that foundation it also means that you, do. you can't. Again, if you're if you've got a partner, if you've got a wife, then to me, that's your, your relationship is always going to be there. So if if relationship is a non-negotiable, if you're married, obviously, especially if you have kids or stepkids. Yeah. So obviously, if, you, so if, you, if you, have to, you have to spin that plate. So if if the business is 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 the you have to get it off the ground because ultimately that is going to provide you with your lifestyle going forward then your body Ability, yep. isn't going to progress. Mm. So it's what can you do at, the, at that moment in time to keep where you're at? So there, there are multiple things you can do. I have like loads of different like workouts that people can do f- from home, like no no gym equipment, body weight stuff. So that there's always something you can do for your body. It's just about allocating it into your time. So any progress you have made, you're not. it's not like you're not diminishing them returns. You're trying to keep them and almost maintain where you're at to the point where you reach a milestone in your business whereby you maybe can alter, like life goal bring someone else in that can enable you to allocate that time elsewhere but it is it's it's so hard because 
this is whereby the the check-in process with me and like the one-to-ones that I have with my clients they said this is where my my role mm. as an online coach s- steers more into life coaching as well because it's like I'm that person that's hopefully gonna give them a a bigger a different perspective on where they're at in their life and it's almost like right okay we're at a point now where you your business has reached that milestone you want to can we can we can we take like 40 minutes out, out of your day maybe three times a week mm, yeah brilliant there we go so there we go we're loosening the loosening the, the coattails of, of business and then we're now putting that into into your body so you can then do oh can i can i do can i make progress in like 40 minutes three days a week fuck yeah you can like if you're if you're fucking reg if you're regimented if yep. you're disciplined and 40 minutes you can you I, I do 45 minutes in, in like workouts every day like you don't have to it's the it's intensity it's not duration like quality over quantity and all that um and obviously like i the the, the personalized thing that i do with my training programs is that whatever your time is and however much you can allocate it's do what you can when you can with what you got there there's there's enough there's enough time in the day and if it means you have to do it like a little bit late at night if you want to change, that's the time you need to do it. Oh, I don't want to do it. Well, you don't want it then. You don't want mm. it enough. It's like, and it's, and like, it's very you, know, true. you it's say very about true. the limited beliefs and like almost like the imposter syndrome. I've, I've dealt with that over the last 18 months. Cause I feel like, who am I, who am I to give people advice when I fucked around for 10 years, but it's just like, no, it's exactly that's that. It's, again, it's, it's, it's the, it was the battle with my mindset. It's just like, well, hang on a minute. I, I am I am the guy that I wanted to to get information from and help from and advice from when I was at my worst. It's like I've been through I've been through shit and I've I've laid yeah. a, I've laid mm. like twelve years of oh, eight eight years of of like progress in the gym. I have that I have become I do have an air of authority. Um, if it, what, what what makes you look at what I've fucking done? Like look what I've done and I'm I'm still able to do things and am I doing things in perfect balance? Hell no, hell no. I'm just aware of it. And it's like sometimes it can take you a couple of weeks to realize that you're out of alignment and it it takes you that that self-reflection time to take stock and go, right, okay, I need to rein back in the gym. I need to focus my elements in work because I have to hit this. I've got I've got a campaign. I've got a campaign on at the minute, like a six week challenge that's launching tomorrow. So my efforts are, are focused on that and working with the companies that help supporting me with that. Obviously, like. Yeah, so it's just it's, it's about again. It's another important, I guess, personal skill that you need to learn is about having that self reflection. Um, but then that's the whole idea of, like you said, you've you've done like three. Uh, how 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 many business coaches have you have you worked with in your life? You've probably worked with uh, quite a few. Life coaches. I did one life coach in a breakup with my partner mm-hmm. in two thousand and nineteen eighteen. That was amazing. So my my then fiance said, "You have a problem." Uh, you need to see a life coach. The life coach <laughs> actually said you need God, to get away but from I come this. Back to <laughs> okay, no. yeah. I was like, yes. So then after that, I used her again, and she she helped me become a CEO. And then uh, I was going to do another one, but a bunch of other things happened. And then I had a business performance coach. We had an a, a, an everyday uh, mm-hmm. chairman slash mentor for the business. That was, he'd been in business for 34 years. He just fucking helped us explode in six weeks. Wow. 300,000 pounds of revenue with him. Just because he gave us referrals. One was 106, one, sorry, one was 90,000, one was 60,000. Mm-hmm. And then another was 11,500. Um, and then uh, there was 128,000 that we closed for a six month uh, agreement for three staff. And like, mate, it was incredible. Wow. That was when my daughter was born. Right, I made sure I had everything ready. So when Bella came yep. into this world, I was like, yeah, "Daddy yeah. has got your fucking back." Right, you are gonna have everything, and I gave my daughter everything, and I built my business, passed it on to my business partner, who really catapulted it. We did four hundred and forty-four percent growth to half a million plus wow. dollars in one year. Second year bootstrapped, bro. Like we fucking smoked the boots off of this shit. And uh, the last year, my marriage, uh, my marriage. Because I sacrificed the time with my wife to have the business Mm -hmm. become what I wanted it to be, I focused on the business. Yep. I neglected the gym completely. And I neglected my wife. And that resentment fell into year three and bit me in the butt to say, Mm -hmm. you chose your work over me. And what ended up happening was 
cho- I cho- yes, I did choose my work over her. Not only did I lose my relationship, but some of my closest business partners, founders, they t- they snaked me in the back. They stabbed me in the back. So I lost. I I tried mm-hmm. to do one thing and got bit in the ass for both. And again, on that back, the one works with the other. Now I'm in a place where I don't have a relationship. Now the business is at the point where it's okay, it's going to function and follow through. And um, mate, and then to be honest, now I'm at a place where I'm I'm contemplating. I really want to get. I've had these little spurts now of uh, of openness in my day yeah. where I've got the spin bike in the room. I cleaned it up. I did it three days yeah. ago. I haven't gotten it yet, but I want to. Right? It's like I've got that passion. I did a few ice ice cold plunges yeah. in the bath, freezing cold water. Did that. That was quite good. Now it's either to go to Pure Gym, walk fifteen minutes to Pure Gym, and pay this thirty pound now a month and be around these smelly lot in there that are in this fucking gym, or buy a bench yeah. on Facebook Marketplace for sixty quid and power block of dumbbells. Because one thing I used to love when I was in the gym and I would see that, you know, when you when like. When you train and your skin obviously starts, to, it yeah, feels yeah. like your skin yeah. is thinner because your muscles are protruding and you become more vascular and you see that in your arms and that you from steel, yeah. right? And I, I believe that like that's steel having high end to pull. And I just want to get two dumbbells yeah. and a bench and cool. start that's, going yeah. at it, right? Gym, pure gym or buying, spending, let's say 200 quid and putting that in my other room and doing that. What would you do if you were me, business owner? You'd, well, I hate there's going your answer. Outside, by the way. Like, would would it be more optimum to have the gym? Probably because you've got an array of equipment to use. But like you said, if you don't enjoy it and the people there, are, yeah, like, are you actually going to enjoy it and properly focus on that time there? Probably not. So it's like the like the like the pros and cons of it. So is is it as is it as is as effective having the workout or having the weights and a bench? Probably not. But are you going to stick to it more? Yes. So there you go. There's your answer. You've got you're almost creating your own little home gym with the spin bike. You've got your cardio bit. You've got your weights bit. So, again, that's it. You can do. You can still. You can still do a lot. You can still do a lot with what you got. Or what you're going to buy. So, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd pick that. If if you say if you don't if you don't like going out and you've you've got you you're happy in your own environment, then then stick to that. So, for those who are watching. What is the best way to get into a fitness regime and maintain discipline when you have a family and other things on the side? Uh, the, the best way is to is to pretty much like journal, journal like what your current schedule is, and then, and it, and it's being like completely fucking honest. Like when you say to people, oh, write down write down a food diary for a week, and it's like there's no fucking way you eat that. There's no way you eat just that. There's just like, it's, 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 it's like, oh, no, I promise you. It's like, no, no, you don't. Like, where's where's the takeaways? Where's the biscuits? Because there's no way you're like ten stone overweight when you eat that. Because I eat less. I eat, I eat more than that. Um. So yeah, it's it's about obviously, it's it's it, I I always come out with like the, the the sayings, but it's like, is your is your um, is the desire to change greater than the desire to stay the same? So it's obviously like if you if you want to change, you'll find a way. And it's like if you're completely honest with yourself and you you like journal what, what a day in your life is. If you know that you have a window, if it's an hour, that's more than enough time. If you have an hour, then it, then it's just about it's like yeah. like you said about like the you you want your end goal. You wanted that you wanted that like hundred million quid, and then you reverse engineer it. So that's the that's the outcome. How, how am I going to get there? Mm-hmm. So it's like. That's yep. what you need to do. So, like, I, I want to get fitter. Okay, what, what do you, what's the what's the goal? What do you want? What's the physique or whatever you want to attain to be? Okay, what can we do? Well, how much time have you got? Have you got access to a gym? Can you buy equipment to do stuff? And then, like you said, you you reverse engineer it. So, it's about doing like a complete, honest, like deep dive into your life and allocating time. That's it. And then, then it's about if you struggle and you haven't stuck to things in the past, or you start things yourself and you don't you don't stick to it. Like, what's the reason why? Is it actually worth investing in a coach? Because I obviously mine has only been from a business point of view. I've not invested in a in a in a in a, in a PT, but I know from a from a coach point of view, like they teach you things, and you are you have someone that's accountable for you. So it's like they'll they'll give you like your your work to do for the next two weeks, a bit like what I would do. I'll give you a 
a program to follow like a, a nutrition mm -hmm. overview i don't just tell you to eat this i give you like your calories and stuff and you can track it and eat it however you see fit i give people like their daily habits to like a, like the checklist of things to do do throughout the day and it's like sometimes people just need that that extra accountability get up do, what, what, what do i need to do off james today right log into the app got, got to do this got to do that i've got this this workout to do i'll do that when i have this hour free in my time and it's like that's when you 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 start small like like you said there's nothing 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 happens overnight it's just mm -hmm. about being on, honest with yourself and realizing that if you need to make a change what can you do how much more can i do at the minute am i wasting time wasting time am i spending like an hour every day watching my favorite episode on netflix yeah we there you go there's there's a fucking hour that you can you can do for going for a walk if you're if you're not into the gym yet and you want to just gain confidence to feel better in yourself go for the walk go for a walk for half an hour come back and watch half an episode like you said just them slow the slow improvements that is it going to happen overnight fuck no but i'm not i'm not that type of pt i'm not that type of coach that's going to go yeah just work with me and in three months you'll be a completely different person like it's not i don't I, I manage people's expectations like depending on where you are and where you want to get to that's when you know how long potentially i'm going to have to work with you or you're going to have to work with me um like set realistic goals because you can't fuck around with people's heads if you give them an idea in their head like oh yeah you'll be you'll be you look like a Greek god in six months. When six months comes, I'm not like a Greek god. Therefore, I'm a failure. Fucking hell, I'm useless. Like the the, the damage that that can do, that can set you on a path mm. to self destruction. So yeah. everyone's individual, and it's always the question: How long will it take me to get fit? How long's a piece of string? I don't know what your dedication is like. I don't know what your training experience is. I don't know what your relationship with food and the gym is. Like I don't know. Until we jump on a call and I get to know you more, that's when we can put the framework around things. Um, so. The small, yeah, the small things you need to do is it's basically like become organized, have a schedule. And I know that sounds really fucking boring. Like it's not sexy. It's not, but it's like, yeah, like you, do. Like, like, like you do with, like, like with work. You have an action, actionable list of things you need to do in a day. And you send that email and you speak to that person. It's the same with Jim. Like don't overcomplicate shit. Like it's the same processes. If you're a successful in, in business and you potentially let your body slip over a period of time, it's not the end of the world. You 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 are in a far better position. The fact that I know that you're disciplined enough to run a successful business, a thriving business, you have that discipline in you. I just need to hone that and navigate you into the world of training and nutrition. You have all the skills. It's just about having a having a plan of action that you can then incorporate all that knowledge and skill and routine that you have with work, implementing it into into the gym. And it's just about it's just that nurturing process of dipping their toe in. Oh, I like this. Okay, brilliant. Or don't like that okay we'll change that and then eventually you come up with a system whereby they're fucking happy and then they can stick to it and that's when the longevity comes in because you're not going to stick to something that you fucking hate like you said you wouldn't if, if you went to the gym you went to that pure gym you probably go for three months and then by the end of that three months you'll fucking hate it and then you'll fuck everything and then you'll fuck everything off i did so it the 17 year old trying to tell, oh God, tell me yeah, i didn't, yeah, didn't know what the fuck i was doing <laughs> I was like, I'm going to slap the fucking shit uh, out of you. Then I'm going to have to go to jail again. Then they're going to say, you're being a kid. So I'm like, oh, my God. So I did so I stopped that. And um, you're right, mate. It's uh, That's why I think about it. Just like if I was here now and uh, after, like, let's just say after this episode, uh, I've got a meeting after this. And then I would love to go. I've got my little Amazon Alexa. I've been <laughs> looking for a mich like a, a good bench. And uh, I, yeah, I don't know if you know yeah, the power I had, blocks, I had the, the adjustable Bowflex dumbbell. Yeah, I had them during lockdown. I made a right little profit on them. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, they were like no, so 800 bought, to 1,000 I got, I got a pair off Amazon for, uh, I think it was about, they were about 400 quid. And I think I sold them, I sold them like two years later for, I think like 50 quid more. It was just like, fucking hell. Like the best. Yeah. yeah. Because this, they're, they're, they're amazing. It's, 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 it's again, it's a space saving thing i i had the first power blocks okay. in 2001 in america and the both machine so that's my eye is on that right now because the resistance training and now i'm in a place where i don't go to the gym to pick up the heaviest weight like i go to the gym to actually feel yes. the, in the entire range of motion and feel that and like yeah, focus the, the like you know how people there, yeah, uh, yeah. the new thing yeah, is focus on the muscle wise all that yeah and i'm really focused on that and i want to spend my time enjoying music yeah and but like I said, working that, out. That's that, that all goes me. back to that's longevity if fun, you're happy right. doing that in your own environment in your own space with the music you want none of the bullshit from anybody else 
you're going to you're going to stick to that far longer and you're going to enjoy yeah. that experience and it's been like it's going to become something that is going to be into your schedule that you do without even thinking about it it's going to go into your subconscious wherever it going fucking hell, i gotta go to that smelly ass gym i'm gonna have that twat kid like speaking to me and it's, that <laughs> you, you end up building up that relationship it's like the gym then becomes a, like synonymous with 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 bullshit and you're not in there enjoying <laughs> yeah. what you need to do you're not going on that journey yeah. for you you're going in there thinking if someone fucking talks to me i'm going to chin them and it's like then you, you're not yeah and you're, you're not you're not falling in love that with the is it the, the process becomes a ball ache and obviously eventually you stop um and it's inevitable you, that's why you need to you need to pick the things that you enjoy um mate that is so solid <laughs> so look we're coming to the top of the hour I think that one of the main things that helps people really see um, where they can go and where a mind can really take itself to, yeah. right? And what I'm talking about is perspective. In 10 years, what do you see for yourself? To, this is how we do it. It's 327. It's the yeah. 10th of January. So on January 10th, 2033, at this very time, where you are now, yep. you've got the things going on in your life right now. What are you doing? If we're gonna, if we if we pick this podcast up in ten years' time, I will be on a. I'll either be on a balcony or I'll be on a beach in Dubai. That's my. I went. I had the opportunity Woo! to go out to Dubai for the first time in November last year. I, I've never been before. It was like one of these yeah. things that all the. It's like the. It's like. It's like influence. It's like. It's like fitness. It's like fitness. Well, mecca out there. Anyone that's, there, a, that's an online coach went out there, and I went out there for a yep. for a business seminar, and it was like, yeah, no, like it's going to be good. I, I, you hear all the stories, but is it going to be too like ostentatious? Or, fuck me, I fell in love. Like it was just. I'll give you a million quid. You open up a you open up a gym in Dubai. I will personally, <laughs> give you, I will hand you a million pound check. That, Seriously, you will, you will, you will, honestly, you will annihilate it there. There's this fat coach, right? He messaged me as I, I got a great program. I was like, all right, you know what? Let me, let me see what's happening. Mm. And he sent me this really cool program, right? It looked great. All kinds of plans and everything. He had an app and I was like, all right, this guy knows. And I was like, I have a question though. Why are you fat? Like in the nicest way. And uh, he was like, "Oh, I'm in bulking season." I was like, "But I've not seen anything where you're in like bulking season." My dad, my, my dad says the <laughs> same thing about me in doing? terms of like you have to practice what you preach. He said, "My dad says it's like the analogy of uh, like a financial advisor yeah. like, arriving arriving on a bike or or his mum dropping him off." He's like, in terms of like you got a financial advisor that arrives in his fucking <laughs> Bentley, you're gonna think this guy knows his shit. Like image is is image everything? Yeah, probably not. It is, yeah, it, especially in fitness industry, <laughs> are you going to pick a fat PT or a fit PT? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? You're going to, yeah. So, yeah, no, it I'm is. It there. is important, and I think, like you said, I think like I have the the image is there, and I think like, to me, it's the backstory as well. Obviously, I've got in a very saturated market. I have got like a um, a niche kind of uh, story. Uh, there's not many guys that have a an eating disorder. There aren't many guys that openly talk about their mental health struggles and. Like I don't give a shit anymore. Like my, I, I say that my, my eating disorder, my eating disorders become my superpower. Awareness. Like that's it. Like it's, it's something that sets sets me apart. Like you said, it yeah. Is. If you learn it's from awareness. your trauma, it's all worth it. People need look. This is the whole. This is the whole point of this. I've met, like I said last year, I've had more engagement, more conversations, more interviews, more friendships, relationships in mm. the past year than I've ever had in my fucking life because of what i'm doing right now and um i'll tell you mate meeting people like you that can share the story and there's somebody to Mm -hmm. either will find this or will watch this and they will have the same story and they will see it's possible for me to get through this i can be like him right that's why i do this i want somebody to look and say i want to be like him right I want to learn from him. Yeah, Shane is funny and all this stuff, but this is the guy now who's got Shane's now got someone who paved the path for me to get fit. That's that's the goal. So where do people find you? If we're gonna do this again, well, I think we'll have to dive yeah, yeah, into sure. more like detail on certain elements. But where can find you? Obviously, my name on here is James the Mental services. Health PT. That's my Instagram handle. Um, obviously, I have the same website 
as well, which, which has like some information on there as well about me. But mainly, it's it's through through Instagram. Obviously, all my all my details and contact details are all on there. So yeah, that's that's the best the best portal call is is Instagram for the for the time being. Well, mate, it was an absolute pleasure. I'm so happy I got a chance to get yes. two hours in with you. And now, there we go. There's uh, <laughs> Victoria, the PA. Shane, where the fuck are you? Yeah. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to push stop. And until next time, guys, like, sub- like, share, subscribe if you got value out of this episode. And reach out to Appreciate Jake. I'll put all of your information at the bottom of this. So go to the description. And uh, this will be a great way to connect with him. So until next time, guys, thank you. And I'll see you again.